expectation. To talk about expectation maximization, first we need to review the concept of max maximum likelihood estimation. In maximum likelihood estimation, we want to find the parameters that will maximize the probability of observing certain values uh, for some random variables. Um, all this talking about a uh, distributed uh, probability density function. So given a density function, uh, in this case a conditional uh, function like probability of x given the parameter theta, um, then we might uh, set this uh, probability to be governed by a Gaussian distribution with some theta uh, parameters that will uh, be represented by the means and the covariances of these possible Gaussians. So given a, a data set of m points um, drawn from this uh, distribution, this Gaussian distribution, then the resulting density will look like this. So the probability of x uh, given theta will be uh, equal to the product for every m points in our data set of the corresponding probability of observing that vector x uh, given the parameters theta. And this could be written also as the likelihood, this L here means the likelihood of theta given x. So if you notice here, here we have first the x and then the parameters theta. When we write the same function, but first uh, writing the parameters given uh, the uh, vectors x, then uh, we are talking about a likelihood function. So it, a likelihood function is a probability function, but it is written explicitly as a function of the parameters. So the function, the likelihood of theta given x, is called the likelihood of the parameters theta given the observed data. So in the maximum likelihood problem, our goal is to find the parameters theta that maximize that function, this likelihood function. So we want to find the optimal vector uh, theta, theta star, in such a way that this theta vector will maximize our function uh, of likelihood. And usually, instead of maximizing directly the likelihood function, which as we saw previously, it's the product for every point in your data set, we maximize the logarithm of the likelihood. Because applying the logarithms, we can simplify the process of optimization. So we can uh, compute derivatives of many terms instead of derivatives of many products. Um, however, and for many problems, it is not possible to solve this maximization problem analytically in closed form. And we need to have other uh, ways to do it, as we will see. The expectation maximization algorithm is a general method of finding the maximum likelihood estimate of the parameters of a distribution given given at a data set. So the EM algorithm is useful when the data is incomplete or has missing values. There are two main applications of EM, uh, of the EM algorithm. The first of course when the data indeed has missing values due to problems with or limitations of the observation process. So suppose that you are working on a robotic application and during the experimentation uh, one of the sensors started failing and then you didn't get enough uh, information for this sensor or maybe it completely 
failed to, to work and you didn't get any information from this sensor. So this could be a case of having a data set with some values for different uh, uh, sensors that could be uh, studied or analyzed as random variables. And some of these random variables, some of these sensors uh, generated uh, incomplete information and you want to estimate the, the values of these um, measurements that were not obtained by the sensors. A second case of application of EM is when you want to optimize uh, the likelihood function and you cannot do it uh, analytically. Um, but the likelihood function can be simplified by assuming the existence of some hidden parameters, also called latent uh, parameters or variables. So to, to understand a bit better the process of expectation maximization, it is important to review this uh, result, which is called the Jensen's inequality, that says that the expected value of the function or the evaluation of some vector x, some random variable x in a function f, will be larger or equal to the evaluation in this same function f of the expected value of x. Okay, and this is uh, true when our function f is a convex function, like in this case. And here you, you can see graphically what this inequality represents. So we have here in the x-axis some values. And here we have a value A and value B. And this point here in the middle will represent the expected value for x. We are considering that x is this uh, axis, is in this x-axis. So this is like, this will be like a minimum value and this would be like a maximum value for some given interval. So the expected value would be simply a value between uh, A and B. Okay. If uh, we evaluate A, we will have here the evaluation in the function F. We are assuming this uh, curve to be the function F, the convex function. Here we'll, we have the evaluation of the point A in function f and down here we will have the value of the evaluation in f of the point B. And once we have evaluated A and B in f, we can compute the expected value of the evaluation of this x, which will be the point exactly between or in the middle of, the, of f of A and f of B. And here we can see that if we evaluate the expected value of x in our function f, the evaluation will be down here. So the expected of the evaluation on f is larger than the evaluation of in f of the expected value of x. Okay, so this is a, a graphical way to remember this inequality. So when f of x is a convex function, we have that the expected value of f is larger than f of the expected value of x. And if the function is uh, concave, then we have uh, that the function, the evaluation of f of the expected of x will be larger or equal to the expected value of the evaluation of f. So we simply uh, change the direction of this inequality when the function is concave. And this is the case that we are going to use because we are going to uh, apply this inequality, this Jensen, Jensen's inequality to the logarithm function, which is a concave function. And we will see this in a moment. So Suppose that we have a training set of m input vectors of dimension n and these uh, uh, examples are independent and we wish to fit the parameters or we want to find the, find the parameters of a probabilistic model of a joint probability distribution 
of variables x and z um, that adjusted or that can explain this uh, data set of endpoints and then we can write the likelihood of this uh, probability distribution first only of x given the parameters theta and trying to uh, or applying the logarithm so it is uh, the maximization of this likelihood is simpler then we can say okay let's introduce this hidden variable z here and then uh, what we see here that we would like to maximize this and this can be written and uh, taking the logarithm out of this expression here now uh, the logarithm of this expression as we have written here introducing this hidden variable z and if we introduce this variable that we we don't have information about this variable that is why it is called hidden variable or latent variable um, but we assume that this variable exists um, we can then introduce also here uh, the probability distribution that will explain the observations of this z variable so we can introduce this as a product of this uh, probability distribution and if we include it as the distribution over the same distribution then uh, we can do this because this will be one and we are not changing anything at this point but then we can move the logarithm inside and then we will have this factor to the left of the logarithm and here is when the Jensen's inequality uh, comes into play because this expression is larger than this one or equal to this one considering that uh, the logarithm is our concave function so here we have the f of the expected value of this uh, probability joint probability over the distribution of z so this part here will be uh, consider it the expected value of this denominator here and uh, in the Jensen's inequality for concave functions like the logarithm then this value will be larger or equal to the expected of the function of the main factor here okay. so in the general case of expectation maximization where we are introducing a hidden variable z considering its uh, probability distribution the algorithm the general algorithm is the following in the uh, expectation step for each of the observations we want to compute the probability of observing this uh, hidden variable z for that uh, example i and this will be computed as the probability of z given the input the only information we have which is the vector the input vector i and assuming some parameters theta and in the m step the maximization step we want to maximize we want to find the theta the parameters that maximize the uh, logarithm of the likelihood which is the expression we got in the previous uh, slide okay. so what we need to do is to maximize this expression and as we will see in the unsupervised case uh, where we don't have the labels of the input vectors and um, it is a, a bit more uh, complicated than if we were having the uh, labels this z variable actually would represent as we will see they would represent the labels of the points if we had the labels like in a supervised case and you solve this problem you will end up with the Gaussian discriminant analysis algorithm which you have worked with in previous exercises but in this case we don't have the labels because this is unsupervised learning and the only thing that we can do 
in this step you will see in the algorithm is to uh, guess to make some guess some guesses initially and then try to maximize that based on, on our initial guesses